So let's say you want to buy a used car. And the only real place in Springfield to go for used cars is Al's Car Barn. So you go on down to Al's Car Barn and you find something that you like. You buy it. And Al's waving to you on the way out the parking lot, out onto the street. And he says, now remember, it comes with a 20-mile warranty. Okay, that's pretty generous, a 20-mile warranty. And so... You drive the car five miles down the road, and then you drive the car five miles in reverse. Now, what happens to the odometer on old cars when you drive them in reverse? Well, the odometer first would have gone up to five, and then as you drive in reverse, it would go back down to zero. And then, in fact, you continue right on past Al's, another five miles in this direction, still in reverse. And then finally, you drive five miles, put the car in forward, and you drive mi five miles an hour, or five miles, rather, forward. And now you're back at Big Al's parking lot. And... Let's say something goes wrong with the car right there. So you say to Big Al, you say, well, okay, I've, I've driven a zero miles on the car warranty. Okay, Look at the odometer reading. It's right at zero. Al, on the other hand, says, no, you've driven 20 miles. And you say, well, if I've driven 20 miles, how can I... How can I still be no farther away than where I was when I started. I'm right back where I started. I, I've driven zero miles. So what is the disagreement here about? I'd like you to just think about that before we pause the video. Think about that before we go on to talk about the answer. Okay, well, hopefully you had a little bit to think about. And now let's talk about what the difference is. Okay, What's going on is a confusion between total distance traveled and change in position. Okay. If we were to draw the V versus T curve for where this car drove, then let's say you drove at a steady pace and then you drove backwards for twice as much time and then you drove forwards again at that same velocity. What's going on with the velocity curve is you win a certain distance, so the signed area here I guess is going to be 5. Signed area here is going to be negative 10, and the signed area here is 5. What your odometer is calculating is the change in position. The signed area from time A to time B of the velocity versus time curve. But the warranty is about something different. The warranty, or in other words, the total distance traveled, is the signed area under the speed versus time curve. So in the speed versus time curve, starts out like that. If it had been a velocity curve, it would have gone on like this and then be like this. But because it's a speed versus time curve, the speed versus time curve looks like this. And so your signed area here is 5 and then positive 10 and then 5. So when you're talking about a car warranty, it's the total distance traveled. But when you're trying to find how far you've gone from where you started, it's the change in position. And in fact, there's a third quantity that we could calculate, and that is your final position. Notice that in the case of both total distance traveled as well as change in position, there was no need to ask about the initial position. Okay. Because they only measure a change. But if you ask about final position, then you need to know where Big Al's car barn 
is located, which is where you were at t equals zero. Let's say that Big Al's is 10 miles east of downtown Springfield. In this case, your final position, because your change in position was zero, your final position would be the same as your initial position, but it obviously doesn't always have to be that way. We're finally at a point in visual calculus where we've learned enough of the basic tools and definitions that we can actually give you a simple word problem. So what I'd like you to do is read over the word problem that is presented here. See if you can't solve all three parts of the problem. And then resume the video while I work through the solution. Okay, I'm assuming that you've tried this out. So now let's see how I do in this same way. First thing I want to do is I want to connect which of these three problems is talking about which of these three terms that we defined in the last situation. Okay, so this first one is about how many miles of wear and tear. Well, wear and tear doesn't care whether you're going forwards or backwards. And so this first question is really a question about the total distance traveled. Now, how far is it to your house? That's a question about change in position. Notice, because it's how far from Al's is it to your house. And then finally, where is your house located? That's a final position calculation. And this of the three is the only one that requires us to know an initial position. Okay, so how many miles of wear and tear have you put on your car? Okay, that's total distance traveled, meaning that is the area under the curve of the speed curve. So, let's fill in the speed curve here. Speed curve looks like, uh, I didn't do that very well, but hopefully you get the idea. Speed curve looks like the velocity curve for these portions. But then for this middle part, it obviously is the absolute value of a negative, so that puts it into the positive. Okay, so let's find these areas. First, how many miles of wear and tear? Let's find the area under the blue speed curve. Okay, we've got a trapezoid here. One half. What do we have? The average of the two parallel sides is one half, one plus three halves and times the distance between them is 20. Okay, that's going to be uh, 5 halves. That's going to be 25 miles. Let's see if you get that. Okay, next we have a triangle. It goes from 1.5 to 3, and its height is 20. So 1 half base of 3 halves times height of 20. That's going to be, what, uh, 15. And then finally we have this triangle. Here we're going to have one half the base, base is one, the height is 20, one half one times 20, that's going to be 10. So the answer to the first question is 25 plus 15 plus 10. So the first question is 50. Okay, now, how far is it to your house from Al? Again, we don't need to know the initial position of Al's car barn. What we need to know is how has the position changed from the start of your trip until the end? Because it says that you drove for four hours from Big Al's and you finally arrive home. Okay. So here we're calculating the area under the velocity curve, the black. So that signed area is going to be 25, negative 15, and 10. And so how far away is your house from Al's car barn? 25 minus 15. That takes us down to 10. Plus 10 is 20. Now, where is your house located? This requires the initial condition. Now notice the initial condition is given in the word problem. Where is Al's car barn located? 10 miles 
east of downtown Springfield. And therefore, we know that x of 0 equals 10. Why? Because you start out right at Al's car barn. The car barn doesn't move as a function of time, but your car does. And it begins at x0 equals 10. OK, so now it's the initial position plus the change in position. And so your house is located 30 miles east of downtown Springfield. So the process that we've applied here, even though it's a toy word problem, is very typical of what you might see in an exam question, AP exam or on a college exam. You're going to have to translate from the terms of the word problem into the concepts that we've discussed, and you have to be very careful to be precise about the relative differences between the change in position, the total distance traveled, and the final position. So to recap this lesson, the key overarching theme is that we have to be precise about the words that we use and how we interpret words in word problems and how we correlate the words from word problems into particular definitions. And some of the most important concepts that will show up time and time again are total distance traveled, change in position, and final position. What's key here is understanding the distinctions between the three. Now, where is all of this headed? Well, obviously calculus is about a lot more than cars traveling up and down a road. Over time, we're going to see that each of the core concepts we've been teaching by way of this extended example of the car driving are going to have broader meaning in the entire calculus course. And in a similar fashion, we're also going to be developing broader meaning for similarly precise definitions and distinctions about acceleration and position, even though our focus so far has been just on velocity and speed. And as with all of these lessons, my real hope is that you will go teach some animate or inanimate object all of these points as a way to reinforce your own understanding.